This is the electric Kit 11 racer, the pride of the students at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. It's already left the competitors in its class in the dust. The Kit 11 is faster and more powerful and efficient, but it still has one crucial bug. There's no juice left. How long does the battery last? 10 to 15 minutes. And would you like it to have more power? Yes, definitely. 30 to 40 minutes would be optimal. It takes around two hours to completely recharge the battery. In the Helmholtz Association Research Center at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, scientists are trying to solve the problem. Maximilian Fichner is experimenting with new chemical compounds to develop the battery of the future. Mm -hmm. How much energy a battery can store and then supply is a question of chemistry. Although sometimes the research sounds more like alchemy. Well, basically, we're trying to develop a battery that can store a lot more energy than any batteries have been able to store up to now. And to do that, we sometimes have to leave the beaten path. That's what we're doing here. The revolution is taking place in complex steel containers. Horst Hahn can best observe the new chemical compounds in a vacuum chamber. They condense onto thin metal foils that will later go into the battery cell. Examination under the electron microscope has revealed that if the material is distributed properly, the cells can store more energy. The texture of the surface is a key factor. We have already shown material. We've already got materials in the lab that are twice as good as the best materials currently used in the production of cells for cars. This electric car uses state-of-the-art technology. The standard lithium-ion battery supplied with it is only good for some 160 kilometers. It's made up of several individual cells. Each one contains two electrodes one coated with graphite, the other with a lithium compound. Now, instead of heavy lead, light metal foils form the battery's two poles. In between is a conducting liquid. It allows electrons to flow freely in the cell. How long the charge lasts depends on the electrochemical makeup. The limits of conventional lithium technology have already been reached. Now researchers are looking for new materials. Fichtner is focusing on metal and metal fluoride compounds. He tests their long-term performance. The small experimental cells work just like the larger cells. What's special about this cell is that it contains new compounds that promise far higher capacities. We're the first to prove that the principle actually works. The idea came up once before, in the 1970s. They tried to build something like this, but it didn't work. Fichtner spent a long time experimenting. He eventually came up with a battery that uses fluoride ions to transport electric charge. This fluoride battery has a greater capacity than a lithium battery. With conventional lithium technology, the discharge process involves one electron being transferred and stored. With fluoride technology, the process involves storing three electrons per metallic atom. And that allows for a storage density that's far higher than anything we've known till now. Smaller, lighter, denser, fluoride technology makes new kinds of batteries possible, as well as cars with ranges of more than 500 kilometers. Fichtner plans to test his new battery in automobiles within a few years. Electric motors are already quite compact, and a fluoride battery should be much smaller than this lithium battery.
The new batteries will make it possible to store up to six times more energy than before. It would be a breakthrough in battery technology and not just on the track, but there's still a long way to go before a battery charge can meet the challenge of a 24-hour race. <laughs>